Today, we're going to look at the Service Stack template for Blazor WebAssembly and why you should consider it for your next line of business application. Blazor is the framework from Microsoft that enables developers to use C Sharp in the browser. Instead of JavaScript, developers can write C Sharp to create standalone interactive web applications. It does this by compiling C Sharp down to a portable binary code format called WebAssembly. WebAssembly, also known as WASM, is fast and runs on all major browsers. Blazor WebAssembly enables developers to create and deploy standalone static web applications that can be hosted anywhere. Combine these features with Service Stack to build the API, and we have the main ingredients for what looks like a Jamstack architecture. Jamstack is a broad type of architecture that separates JavaScript, API, and markup. That is, it promotes statically generating your markup, enhancing your site or application with JavaScript, and using well-defined HTTP APIs for backend operations. This clean decoupling allows for greater portability and flexibility, which is something Service Stack supports by ensuring the APIs you build are always well-defined and interoperable thanks to its message-centric design. However, since we are writing C-sharp and generating WebAssembly, it doesn't strictly meet the JavaScript part of the stack. But in its place, we have an expressive language thanks to Blazor WebAssembly. This is sometimes referred to as WAM stack since we have WebAssembly doing the work, but regardless of the acronym, it does provide a compelling option to teams heavily invested in .NET and c -sharp. Normally, this would come with some trade-offs, however. Keeping the Blazor WebAssembly client isolated from the server means we can't use any of the pre-render modes that depend on the ASP.NET host. By default, this does lead to a slower initial load time. This is due to the initialization cost of .NET and the Blazor framework in your browser during the initial load. To avoid these slower initial load times, you need to pre-render the content and send everything down on the first request that the client makes. Microsoft's pre-rendering guide provides a solution to this using server-side rendering. This requires a coupling of your Blazor WebAssembly client and an ASP.NET host since pre-rendered content is generated and rendered by the server. The Jamstack approach is to generate this content ahead of time using static site generation and deploy it with the client application itself. This template provides a pattern to generate HTML from Razor and Markdown during publish, which gives us a true pre-rendering solution for optimal user experience and SEO. The combination of a decoupled client, consistent language across client and server, and following our recommended API-first development patterns, this template becomes our preferred and recommended project for developing internal .NET line of business applications. This is because combining Service Stack and Blazor WebAssembly, we get the advantage of well-defined typed APIs, and since the server and the client share the same language and models, there is no need for extra tooling when communicating between the client and server server. Service Stack's typed and decoupled design lets you reuse your c -sharp data transfer objects and typed service clients as is, without any extra effort. A traditional TypeScript-based client would need help from extra tooling to generate the TypeScript message DTOs as well as keeping them synchronized across projects. But with Blazor and Service Stack, we get an end-to-end -end typed API in your Blazor app automatically without any code generation. We have the same language in both projects, and Blazor is handling the serialization in the browser to the server without us having to worry about it. Especially for developers not proficient in JavaScript, this provides a massive productivity boost. To improve the developer experience further, in the latest release of Service Stack, we also have a new Blazor components library. These components enable extra reuse of our service model to enrich the user interface. Since they are DTOs, we still have a clean separation of concerns, but we also get the experience of tight integration due to the shared c -sharp language thanks to Blazor. Also included in the latest release is a new API for our typed service clients. For Blazor WebAssembly, this means we can call any service stack service with the request DTO and get back an API result of type T. API result encapsulates the typed API response message and structured error details. This enables a simplified model for handling both successful requests and error responses with the same typed response. 
Having a generic wrapper means we have more opportunity to handle API responses of different types in generic ways. This new API is universally available across all service stack service clients and service gateways. This means with your Blazor WebAssembly project, your APIs remain interoperable with other languages and tooling, giving us the best of both worlds. Let's create a new Blazor app from this template and walk through the features and how to use the new servicestack.blazor components. To follow along with this walkthrough, you will need Visual Studio 2022 with the .NET 6 SDK. To get started with the template itself, we can download a zip from jamstacks.net. Here we have ServiceStack's Jamstack templates, including the Blazor WebAssembly template. Provide your project name in the text box at the top and click on the Blazor logo to download your templated project. We're going to be using the name Blazor App as the project name, extracting it to a local folder, and we now have a new project ready to use. With our new project created, we can open it using the latest Visual Studio 2022. It is possible to use other tooling like Rider or VS Code, but for the best Blazor support, Visual Studio is still recommended. At the time of recording this video, Visual Studio had the best support while others were still catching up. Once opened in Visual Studio, we can see we have the usual four projects common in service stack templates, but this template also includes the extra blazorapp.client project. This client contains our Blazor WebAssembly project, which is designed to be statically hosted. This template uses features like a to-do list and booking system as integration examples. These are integrated using a clean reusable API on the separately hosted service stack application. This separation makes Blazor WebAssembly just another client application that consumes your service stack API. The Blazor client sends and receives request and response data transfer objects, or DTOs, the same way as any other client of a service stack API would. This consistent message-based design helps us reason about our systems as they grow. Let's run the application and take a look at the different client and server interactions. Opening call hello.razor under the pages directory, we have a hello world component calling the built-in hello service and displaying the result. All components and pages, including call hello, use the app component base class, which is included in the template. This class uses a base class from the servicestack.blazor library to reduce boilerplate code. It does so by exposing client server integration methods like the API async method. API async returns API result, which wraps the response DTO and provides easy to use properties for error handling. Here we can see a single if check on the local API result hello response field to display the result only on success. ServiceStack.Blazor UI components like the text input component will handle the display of any error messages automatically from the server. The response status uses cascading value to populate child components like text input with this extra context. This gives us the flexibility to develop quickly with errors handled and displayed by default using the ServiceStack.Blazor UI components. A more complex use of the ServiceStack.Blazor components is the bookings CRUD example. This page restricts itself to authorized users only using the authorize attribute. If the user isn't authorized, the main app.razor routes the user to a sign in view to log in. Logging in with admin, the bookings query binds back to the UI with the standard Blazor syntax, but the create and edit use servicestack.blazor components to simplify our forms. Opening create.razor and we can see how this works. Each of the form inputs are using bind-value with a capital V, and we can see all fields are binding to properties on a single instance of a request DTO. If an error is returned, error messages are automatically displayed with the corresponding input control. This is driven by the cascading value parent element which is binding to the error property of our API response. This error information cascades down to the servicestack.blazor input components and each pulls out any applicable validation error information to display if available. Error summary component will display the error summary message. This can be useful for errors that don't apply to individual fields. We can specify fields that will handle their own visible errors using the visible fields property. The styling of the servicestack.blazor components are also swappable between Bootstrap 5 and Tailwind. The template is also set up to easily swap to use locally modifiable copies of these components in your project, making them completely customizable. 
In the shared directory of your blazor.client project, you'll find a components folder with a readme.ss file. Here you will find information to change themes or switch to local copies of these components. Let's go back and have a look at our create.razor page for our bookings example to see what code is required to run this page. Scrolling down to the code block at the bottom, we can see there is not much to it. The onSubmit function that makes the request to our API and handles a successful response is just four lines of code. This is because the request DTO and cascading API result drives a lot of the functionality. All validation is being handled on the server and displayed against the corresponding controls. For example, opening the edit component, we can see the same pattern but with a bit more going on, including managing deletes. For delete requests, errors will bind using explicit status of a separate request instance and error summary. By leaning on the message contract information in our request CTOs, we can reduce the code in our HTML forms. Remembering that in this template, the client is a static application hosted on a CDN or content distribution network. Only the server stack API is on an ASP.NET host, keeping a clean separation of concerns, but we still benefit from the typed end-to-end -end integration and shared language models during development. The template also comes with a user management interface. Here we can create or delete users as well as manage their permissions and details. This UI is dynamic and reacts to metadata messages from our API. These service APIs are provided by the admin user feature plugin configured on the server. Navigating to the app host project and opening the configure.authorrepository.cs file, we can see how this works. The admin user feature plugin has various properties that populate metadata used by the admin UI. The query user auth properties option controls the columns visible in the read or index page. This can change further based on query media rules for smaller screens. User form layout allows us to extend beyond the default user auth. For example, app user is actually a custom type with many additional properties. App user represents our user auth in our configured ORM light database backed by an in-memory SQL light. Let's look at an example where we add a new property to app user and get it to display on our user management interface to see how this works. Say we want to track an external account number associated with each user. First, we would create a property on app user called ext account ID of type string. Next, we would add the property to the user form layout list on the admin user features plugin. Running our application again and clicking new users, we can already see our field in the new create UI. Adding ext account ID to query user auth properties makes it visible to the query table. By changing these two properties, we have updated create, edit, and query views for our user interface. This dynamic user interface will even react to custom validation on your custom app user. Add a fluent validator for app user and validate it during a custom on before create user method to handle validation. The thrown validation errors will serialize back down to our client and they will cascade down to the related dynamic components. The admin users feature plugin provides a lot of utility out of the box, but since everything is a service tech service, you can migrate to a fully customized set of services and user interface at any time with the same typed end-to-end -end safety. Finally, the template also supports statically generating HTML from markdown files. This leads to fast load times and improved SEO. This method is provided by the template since Blazor pre-rendering currently depends on having an ASP.NET host for the Blazor client. That is, unlike other Jamstack frameworks and templates, Blazor WebAssembly is not providing a static site generation solution, but a server-side rendering solution only. This does result in the same user experience on the client, since both are providing the full HTML content on the initial page load. But it also dictates your hosting setup and we miss out on the flexibility of the Jamstack style architecture. This pattern built into the template means we can still host on a CDN, keep a clean separation of concerns and still provide instant load times for content heavy pages. During development time, these markdown files are rendered at runtime, but when published, users will see these pages load instantly since all the content comes down in the initial load without waiting for Blazor to initialize. Three markdown page examples in this template are deployment, hosting, and pre-render. The deployment page walks through hosting the client via a CDN and the API using a plain Linux host with Docker. 
This is all built using GitHub Actions as well as GitHub Pages for our CDN hosting. The pre-render page goes into detail about how the pre-render functionality works in the template for both Markdown and Razor files. Lastly, the hosting page shows you how you can leverage cheap hosting while building your proof of concept. At ServiceStack, we use this approach for hosting demos of the templates themselves. Hosting a template demo with a dedicated container costs us only 40 cents a month by using a single server on DigitalOcean. And since the client and server are separate, you can mix and match your hosting based on your requirements. For example, moving the API container to a serverless provider or hosting the client and server together. Blazor WebAssembly is a promising framework for high-performance standalone web applications. It provides a uniquely productive development workflow for building rich web applications completely written in c -sharp. Combined with ServiceStack's well-defined API development model, you end up with a flexible and scalable architecture that is highly interoperable with the same language front to back. So while Blazor WebAssembly might not be ideally suited for all teams and projects, when used in the right situation, it could make a huge difference to your team's productivity. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.